All righty, Owen, I think we might get underway. Yep, let's go. So uh, my name's James Curran. I teach at the University of Sydney. Uh, I run a thing called the Australian Computing Academy, which is a place in Sydney Uni that helps teachers teach um, the digital technologies subject at school. Um, and so that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, and Owen works with me at the Computing Academy to, to train teachers so that you can learn as much about digital technologies and computers at school as possible. Owen, do you want to add anything? Um, yeah, so yeah, my name's Owen. Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much uh, for coming. Yeah, I, I help James in writing lots of the content that you might have done at school. Uh, so when you're teaching digital tech technologies and doing uh, learning programming, you might have seen some courses that we have written already, and we're going to show you some of those um, as well if you haven't. All righty. Next one. Owen, so what we're going to talk about today are algorithms. So if you've, um, uh, if you've come across the word algorithms before, uh, just send us um, a message in chat just saying yes, um, that you, you think you know what an algorithm is already. I'm going to define it for you right now if you haven't. So an algorithm is the sequence of steps and the decisions you make needed to solve a problem. And so if you've Let's think about different places where that might happen in your life. So if you follow a recipe to bake a cake or cook something, you're following an algorithm. If you um, give someone a set of instructions for how to get from one place to another, so some directions, then you're actually giving someone an algorithm to get from one place to another. If you're following a, uh, a sequence of steps to do something that you've learned at school, so for example, um, let's think about how we spell some words. So think about a word like run, which is a verb. If we want to turn that word run into the, the progressive form, so the one where you can keep doing it, running, how do you spell that? Well, that's an example of an algorithm that you follow. You check to see whether the last letter of the word is, a, is one of a set of consonants like N, and if it is, you double it. So you put an extra N there and then you add an ING on the end. So even if you maybe have never come across the word algorithm before, you actually use algorithms and you're learning about algorithms all the time. What we're going to try and do today is teach you as much about algorithms as we can because computers are really good at following algorithms but the algorithms need to be defined and described to them in really in lots and lots of detail because computers are really fast but really dumb. So they can do things really quickly. Um, and yes, Caleb, exactly. It's a series of step-by-step -step instructions to do something. Often you need to make decisions in there. So for, for something like a computer to help, it can't just follow the same instructions over and over. It needs to make some decisions on our behalf. Some of the time, those algorithms also involve repeating steps. So if you think about adding, let's say, uh, several two or three digit numbers together, then you're going to have a repeated process where you're going to keep adding those numbers one after the other. So we're going to go through some examples of following algorithms this morning so you can see how tricky it is to actually get a computer to do that. All righty, Owen, let's we had, go. We had some uh, great examples in the chat, like a Rubik's Cube, which is a fantastic example mm -hmm. of um, following an algorithm. Uh, so right now we're going to do an, uh, an activity. Um, we're going to watch us do an activity first to right. get an example of how it's going to work, and then you guys are going to do an activity after that. Um, so I'm going to describe something that James is going to draw on the screen. I'm not going to tell him what it is, but I'm just going to describe the algorithm that James needs to follow precisely in order to um, come out with the final result, which is going to be a specific So, so Owen is like the programmer. He's the one telling me what to do, and I'm like the computer. I'm the one that's going to try and follow the instructions. So we're both under a lot of pressure here. I don't know what Owen is going to ask me to draw, um, uh, so I'm just okay. going to put my best shot. Here okay, so you got your pen ready, James? Yep, I'm good to go. Okay, so on uh, um, the left-hand side of the screen, yeah. Uh, draw a rectangle that is twice as tall as it is wide. 
Okay, here we go. Is everyone seeing that? Uh, drawing this just with the touchpad. There oh, yeah. we go. There you go. Yeah. That's good. Um, so mirror that rectangle. And so draw the same thing on the right hand side. Um, so notice already that Owen used the word mirror there as kind of a way of saying repeat the same steps. Now, my drawing's not fantastic, so it's not quite the same size, but pretty close. That's, that's pretty good. Okay. Um, about uh, a third of the way up, draw a horizontal line that connects the two rectangles. Uh, okay. A third of the way up. Draw a horizontal line that connects the two rectangles. Yep. Okay. That's yeah. pretty good. Okay. And about halfway up, the the two rectangles again, halfway up, um, yeah. draw a semicircle that connects the two as well. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Done that. Okay. Good. Um, so more like a skipping rope. <laughs> a little bit like a skipping rope. Um, and below that semicircle, draw one um, parallel parallel to that uh draw a semicircle parallel, parallel. circle i feel like this might be going wrong already on because i'm now yeah. going off the page something okay here um okay from the horizontal line to uh the second semicircle draw a series of um vertical lines that connect the horizontal line to the semicircle okay like this yep Yep, and repeat those all the way along. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing. Am I doing like a smiley face? <laughs> Could be. Uh, if you have any guesses, if you have any guesses in the chat, um, uh, let us know what what it is. And okay, I've done it. I'm pretty happy with that. If it's meant to be some kind of sinister smiley <laughs> face. I think lots of people are correct. Um, and Anna, yes, this is the coding webinar. We will get to coding, um, but programming is much more than just writing programs. It's about solving problems. Okay, L lots of you um, are correct. A, a bridge, an upside down bridge. I will uh, try and uh, jump to the next slide without... Um, so you can see that what I was describing and you can compare with what James drew. I'll just um, erase James, James's one now. So, so what happened there? What went wrong with the instructions? Um, let, us, uh, let us know in the chat. What, yeah, what let us wrong. know. What did, did Owen get something wrong or did I get something wrong in the instructions? Now, I'm going to blame Owen. <laughs> Owen's going to blame me, but um, one of us... Uh, yeah, thanks, Sierra. I agree. I think Owen too. Yeah, yeah. it was, it was not it was not precise enough. It was, exactly. it, was up, it, it was upside down. It was and this is the challenge here, right? Is that Owen uh, <laughs> actually gave very clear instructions, um, but it just happened to miss one really important detail. And since I didn't know what it was that I was going to be drawing, then. Uh, it was, uh, it's confusing. And I had to make a choice and I made a choice that I thought was the right one. Now, if you're teaching a computer to solve a problem by describing an algorithm, the computer cannot have any confusion about what it is that you wanted to do. Computers can't handle confusion at all. In fact, we describe it when we talk about a word that has multiple meanings, then um, a, a computer can't handle multiple meanings. In English, um, we would call that ambiguity. So we would say that a, a word has, or a sentence has multiple meanings and is ambiguous. So now you guys are going to have a go as well. So grab a bit of paper. Yep, a bit uh, of pen and paper. And then and paper, and Owen's going to hopefully, Owen's going to maybe give you some clearer instructions this time. I'm hoping he's actually learned his lesson. Yep, and uh, James, are you, are you going to draw this one as well? Uh, yeah, look, I will. I'm going to celebrate by changing the colour, though. Okay. Oh, green. Okay. I'm All gonna right. So now, you guys draw your own. Don't watch my awesome drawing until you're done. Yeah, okay. So uh, have a go. Get a pen and paper ready um, and draw a, uh, a square um, that's about uh, half half the size of the, and about a third of the size of the paper, just draw a square. I'll give you a few seconds to do that. Yep. Interesting. It's about a third of the size. Okay. Um, 
inside this, all right, I'll, I'll assume you've all done that. So inside the square, draw um, two more littler squares, but wait till you draw it. I'm going to tell you where, that, where they are. Um, the left-hand side one is um, about a quarter of the size of the original square, but in the top left-hand corner, just a little bit in, about a quarter of the size again. A bit, a bit smaller, but oh, a little bit in. Oh, a little bit I, in. Did, I didn't wait. Too bad. You didn't, didn't turn me fast enough. Um, and do the same square on the opposite side. So this time James wasn't listening. Do so square on the wait, I'm going to do the, the same right on the other side. side. Right. I'm going to make a mistake on both sides. I'm afraid. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Good. Inside the square, um, draw a rectangle. Um, that's at the connects to the bottom and it's um about the same width as the squares but um is uh comes up to about halfway up the square so it connects to the bottom line and comes about halfway up yep right. are you doing a face shall i put little eyes in it <laughs> uh oh, if you listen to the instructions carefully james you'd see that it you'd, you'd already know that it's not a face why not? Um, I could just watch this. I'll do that. A few of you are confused. I'm just describing the thing that we're drawing. Um, yeah, so you should be following Owen's instructions as closely as you can. I just added eyes, which was not really what I should have done. So okay. Gonna, so and, um, uh, inside that rectangle, draw uh, put a put a dot uh, halfway up on the right hand side. Oh, right hand side. Right -hand ah. side. Um, then on top of the square, uh, draw a, a an uh, equilateral triangle. Oh, I don't even have space for that, Owen. You didn't tell me early enough. I don't have enough room. <laughs> we have to do that. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, that was not. Well, people, it, it does cross over. Already a having bit. a guess. As to what it is that we've made. Yeah, I think lots of people are guessing that's coming through. Um, Good. Fantastic. I'll skip over to what I was uh, describing. And that's what I was describing. You can see James's uh, monstrosity um, slightly above it. Um, so, yeah, excellent work, everyone. You got, you got that it was a house. Um, so, so who did did everyone get something that looks like a house? I'm going to clear mine now because it's really embarrassing to Owen who got it terribly wrong. Oh uh, yeah, I think I think James got this one. This okay? Wrong. Did I get it wrong or did Owen get it? Did wrong? anyone get Sorry, get something wrong. close to a house? Okay, a few of you did. Some of you didn't. Um, great. Um, you see that um the instructions when you're just describing the shapes and their uh, positions, um. Uh, is actually a really difficult thing to do and, and interpret. Um, but if you're describing things carefully and without without error, you might have to add lots of detail. And as humans, it's sometimes easy to jump ahead or skip a bit of detail. So those of you who uh, got it, got the house out um, correctly, uh, very well done. Yeah. Now, the thing to know about this is this is exactly what a computer has to tell a printer every time you print something out on a piece of paper or your computer needs to tell the display um, to follow particular instructions for what things appear on the screen in front of you. So you might think, well, you know, how does that relate to computers? This is exactly what computers have to do. They have to describe the sequence of lines and shapes and their position um, on every page that you ever print or on any page, any image that you display on the screen is all going to involve a set of instructions that the computer is following. So, um, and if you can start to understand this idea, you can start to see the algorithm to appear anywhere in your life. Oh my God, Owen, that is the loudest keyboard I've ever come across. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so we're going to move on now to another, uh, to think about some other cases like this. So one of the biggest problems that we came across in doing this activity was this idea of ambiguity. Um, and 
Um, and, and part of the, the thing about ambiguity and part of the thing about describing these instructions, thanks, Owen, is that um, some things are easier to describe than others. So I think the house was probably an easier thing to describe than it was the, um, the Harbour Bridge. Um, the other thing about it is some things are easier to recognise straight away. So maybe you, when you were drawing the house, maybe you knew earlier on what it is that you were drawing. And as soon as you knew, it actually made it easier for you to follow the instructions to understand what's going on. And the reason this is tricky often is because of this ambiguity in language. So we're going to look at another example now. Here's a really simple <laughs> sentence. I made her duck. For a minute, I want you to think about what um, what that sentence might mean. What, is, what are the possible interpretations of I made her duck? It's a really simple sentence. It's the kind of thing you might learn to uh, read in kindergarten or year one when you're at school, but it's actually too hard for a computer to understand. And let's and I want to want you to think about why. So what are the possible meanings of this? We're going to now show you some pictures that are some of the interpretations we've had of this simple sentence. Thanks, Owen. OK, some great suggestions coming in. So the first one, and maybe some of you have come up with this answer, is you made her duck down. Say you were playing cricket and you bowled a bouncer okay. and uh, she had to duck out of the way because the ball was coming too close to her head. So, you know, we know that Victorians love their cricket, the kind of thing um, that could quite easily happen. So that's only one possible. So that was making her duck down. Mm -hmm. What about another one, Owen? Another one might be that you made her dinner. Duck was one of the main ingredients. So here looks like they're on a date together and it looks like he might have cooked um, that duck that's sitting there on the table. So that's a second different interpretation, even though that sentence is really, really simple. Let's see, what else have we got? Um, I made her duck. So you may have actually made a duck for her. Maybe you made a toy. It might have been made out of wood or paper or wool or some other kind of thing like that, and you did it in craft at school, um, and uh, you made that for her. Now, the thing is, a computer can't tell the difference between these three interpretations. In fact, it might be other interpretations as well. Thanks, Owen. Um, it could be any of these different things. And when we're writing code for a computer, we need to tell it exactly what to do, and there can be no ambiguity. In fact, programming languages are designed so that there can be no confusion whatsoever um, about uh, what the instructions are. Now, we've just done one really simple example with drawing a picture, and if you're at home, um, you can do this with another family member. We'd love to see you give this a try. Draw a picture, a fairly simple picture yourself. Don't show um, another family member what that picture is, but try and give them some instructions uh, to actually draw it, and then don't let them show you what they're drawing until they're finished and see how close it is to your original one. So that's one thing you can do. Let's look at another example of how you can do this at home, Owen. So if you've got a little Lego kit, Lego is really great for this um, activity too. So it doesn't need to be a new kit. It can be something you've already got around the, the house. Um, if one of you has the instructions but the other person has the parts, you can describe the steps needed to solve the problem, in which case solving the problem is building the little Lego model. We do this all the time with students and teachers. It's a really fun activity, and it's a challenge to try and describe the steps without ever showing them the instructions. And hopefully in doing this, what you'll discover is it's really hard to describe and describe an algorithm um, clearly and simply. So um, uh, that's another great example you should be able to do at home. You can do it with any kind of blocks. You can actually build your own structure, take a photo of it on a phone or an iPad, um, and then try and give, take the, the thing apart again and then try and give the pieces to the other person. So that's another and great example of a thing that you can do too. Uh, we've got some questions coming in, James. Uh, some, yep. You mentioned the word ambiguity. Uh, mm -hmm. Steph asks, what does ambiguity mean? 
So ambiguity means that a word or a sentence has more than one meaning and it's hard to choose which one's the right one. So there are lots of words um, like that in English. Here, duck was an example that we just talked about. Ducking could be me moving out of the way of the camera. It could be, you know, if I had a quacking duck here. The last time we ran this webinar, um, yeah. one of my staff actually had a plaster of Paris duck in the background. So, yeah. Um, and Stephanie, no, you don't have to do this activity now. This is just an example of something we'd love to see you do outside of today's webinar. Yep. All right, next one, Owen, let's keep going. Yep. So here we've got an example now of some instructions for an activity that we call Wombot. Um, and we're going to be doing some coding examples with Wombot in a minute, but you can actually do these um, without coding as well. In fact, um, in a minute when I go on camera, I'm going to show you um, this uh, cutout Wombot that you can do to follow the same kind of instructions. So here you'll see on the left, there's a set of instructions that say F means go forward one square, L means turn left, R means turn right. And if there's a number that comes straight after a letter, so F2 means move forward two squares. Now you'll see there are a set of options on the left hand side there, four different options. I want Oops. you to try and follow those instructions and see which of those sets of instructions result in the Wombot actually reaching the carrot and Owen's going to put up a poll for you to answer it. Um, yeah, I think we're going to type up, type in the chat, actually. Okay, we're just going to do the chat version. All right, so we'd like you to type into the chat um, which one, and there's. I'll give you a hint, there's more than one of these options that's correct, but not all of them are. We want you to just type in which of these options, if you follow the instructions, leads the Wombot to a carrot. Yeah. We'll give you a couple of minutes to think about that. I've got some answers coming in um, already. Good. Great work, everyone. All right. We'll give you another 10 or 15 seconds to come through with the answers. All right. Pretty, most of you have got them correct. Well done. Excellent work. So uh, the correct answers were uh, option two and option four. So let's let's actually turn on annotation, Owen, and quickly do one of these. Yeah. So option, let's do option two quickly. So option two involves, first of all, going uh, forward two squares. So one body is going to go here and then here, forward two. Then we're going to turn left. So that's now the Wombot would be pointing up the screen. And I'm just going to draw that as an arrow. And then the Wombot is now going to go forward four. So that's one. Oh, my X is so good now. Two, three, and four. And now I need to turn left again. So I'm now going to be pointing. My Wombot is going to be pointing in this direction. Then it's going to go forward one and two and then i need to turn left again and the thing to remember is you've got to think of it in the direction that the wombot is already in it's not about left and right as you see it on the screen you have to think about it in terms of where the wombot is and then i'm going to do my last go forward two more and bam i've got myself a carrot and i can tell you that uh, wombots love carrots so <laughs> landing all right so um uh, and if you follow that through, as Owen said, you'll see that option two and option four are the correct options for solving this particular problem. And you can do exactly the same process um, for option number four. And you'll see uh, an activity on the ACA website that your teachers might point you at later for printing out these Wombots and following through some more complex um, paths and directions that you can set up yourselves at home. Okay. Um, and so here's an here's an animation that hopefully will play um, that can show you getting to either carrot. So doing exactly the same set steps that James James describes. So it goes one way, or you can 
And you'll okay. notice the Wombot here is actually make, following a, a, a making a decision. It's first of all asking the question, do you want me to get the closest carrot or the other one? And then it's uh, following different instructions in that case. And you'll see that there are opportunities to do that in the Wombot activity um, at the online activity later. Yeah, and we're about to show you that in a, in a few minutes. Yeah. Um, so here's a link to print off that um, particular uh, Wombot that James has. Um, but right now we're going to get into doing a different activity, uh, James. Yeah, all right. So there's a version of this that you can find on YouTube that, that your teachers might point to you later, but we're actually going to do it live now as well. So let's jump on to the next slide. So what we're going to do is I'm going to be the robot again. I've got, I'm just going to switch my camera over so you can see what I've got here. So um, if you want to uh, stop the screen sharing for a minute now, Owen, um, and uh, focus on my other camera. So can everyone now see um, me on the screen here? There we go, great. So I've got a loaf of bread. I've got some butter or margarine, depending on what you like on your Vegemite sandwich. I've got the trusty Vegemite itself. So I had one of these Vegemite sandwiches for lunch every day for 13 years of schooling. So I'm quite the expert on Vegemite. I've got myself some um, uh, tools that I need to do the job. What I'd like you to do is write down what other set of instructions you need to follow to make a Vegemite sandwich. And I'm gonna get Owen to do the same thing. And in a minute, he's gonna read out his instructions to me, and I'm gonna try and follow those instructions um, exactly as he's described. And again, you can do this at home with your family too. So it doesn't need to be a Vegemite sandwich. You can be making almost anything. Um, and you want um, someone else in the family to write down the instructions and you're gonna try and follow the instructions exactly. So I'll give you a minute or two just to write out a few steps needed to make a Vegemite sandwich or some other kind of thing that you would regularly eat uh at lunchtime at uh, school i'm very open to crowdsourcing my instructions as well so if you want to type some instructions in the in the chat um we can uh we can give them to yeah, teams. So, so maybe write out your instructions on a bit of paper first and then send through to us what your first instruction is in the chat would be really great okay we've got a few instructions coming coming through all right i'm gonna um, get myself in position then i'm gonna turn on get, my extra light. Um, get uh, take out two slices of bread okay take out two slices of bread so here's my bread um still kind of struggling a little bit with how you take them out owen what's yeah i mean you can you can keep going it might be it might be a bit I'm of a uh, robot here and i'm not very good at following maybe damaging the, the damaging the bad you might have to move the a bit more forward so we can see what you're doing yeah James. sorry we might have to open the little tab open um, the tab, open I, don't the tab. A, I don't even know what a tab is um explain what a tab is <laughs> um the what even do you call that thing um the take that off the thing <laughs> the clip. Yeah, see, see the clip already how hard this is imagine if you were a, imagine if you were explaining how to make a sandwich to um a, an alien that had never seen a sandwich before the little plastic thing thanks everyone plastic thing. yeah good people i'm glad you're helping because everyone's struggling now um all right i'm gonna take uh out two slices of bread yeah no one's told me what bread is though do, okay. I, do I want this bit? No. Really? <laughs> what, about the crust here? what about this one? This one's got a hole in it. That's okay. That's okay. 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 So I've got two bits of two of these things then. Yep. Okay. Right, now, now what's next? Um, we're going to pick up the knife. Okay. Uh, yep. And uh, open the open the butter. All right, put down the knife and open the butter with both hands. Oh no, yeah, that's the type of butter. I'll... <laughs> you don't... Um, yeah. How do I, how do I open the knife? 
I mean, you can cut it, but put down the knife and open up the butter. Let's try and not waste okay. the... How do, waste, I, how do I open butter? butter? Uh, what is butter? What is butter? Slice can bread. Help out in chat, folks. Yeah, the pull, pull, the, pull, pull the wrapper off. That's, uh, okay. that's pretty good. Oh, you can. Yeah. Some people suggesting cut it right through. But um, yeah, actually, I was nearly going to, but it looks like that knife is pretty blunt. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Take. Uh, pick up a bread knife. A bread knife. Okay. What's a bread knife? Uh, Old bread knife. No. The other. The okay. other knife. The other knife. Get the smaller right. knife. The smaller right. knife. One of the smaller knives. That's a spoon. Add this on camera as well. No. Yeah. no. Okay. So one of these. Now yeah. what? Um. Uh. Get some butter on the knife. Pick up. Uh, scrape up. So yep, yeah, that's good. And now. <laughs> All right, put right, the also, butter onto good, the picks bread. Picks on, picks on the way. <laughs> okay, so this is looking good. Okay, so I think um, I think in interest of time, we might um, we might. Uh, James is not a very good at um, ma making <laughs> making Vegemite sandwich. It's not going well. No, spread the spread the butter. Um, okay. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take some margarine instead because that butter is straight out of the, um, fridge. Out of the so, fridge. I'm going to spread now. Where do I spread it, Owen? Uh, spread it all over the top of the piece of bread. Okay. Are uh, you switched your oh. camera back, James, just then? Oh, did I? Yeah. Oh, that's accidental. You know what happened? That was the margarine, actually. Um, uh, on the face of the bread, people are saying, on the face of the bread. That's the top um that's the top okay well unfortunately i've already i've already said on the top of the bread so i did it right. on. <laughs> so on the face of the bread yeah the bread doesn't have a face <laughs> it's not uh, a it's on not the white animal. white oh cover the white part of the bread How oh that? nice that's actually that's a really great instruction cover the white bit yeah. um because that actually tells me how much i need to you know where i need to put it okay good okay All All right. Right um unscrew the vegemite open the vegemite and then open take off the lid and place it down okay place okay now repeat uh place it off the bread oh, well you didn't say that owen <laughs> now i've got margarine all over the vegemite lid oh that's your fault no it's uh, not you can tell me what to do um so now uh, repeat the same process and scrape the Vegemite over the margarine. A th a uh, uh, do what? Sorry, say that again. Uh, scrape the Vegemite over the margarine on from. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Look at what that's done. <laughs> I think you're just. Well, I think you're just uh, being silly now, James. Um, no, I'm following your instructions exactly. <laughs> I'm doing exactly what you're telling me to now. I said, I course. said, read the, repeat the process to do the margarine with the Vegemite. So get the, use the butter knife, get the Vegemite out of the jar, and scrape it over the margarine. All right. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to stop messing with Owen now because while it's fun. We're not going to be able to get to the coding, James. You're, you're taking to the, too long with your... <laughs> now, I'm actually going to switch back to my other camera now, um, and uh, we're going to keep going. Um, I'm going to eat some of this sandwich. Uh, it's actually not bad. <laughs> uh, I lost a bit of the bread there. Okay. Uh, but, Owen, you've made a complete mess of all of my stuff. Oh, well. Um... Why have you... Why was that such a mess, Owen? What um, because giving instructions is is hard, and it's uh, hard to give verbal instructions when there's no assumed knowledge. Yeah, and I think that's the thing, right, is that um, in giving these instructions, Owen actually assumed that I really already knew how to make the sandwich. But when you're trying to give instructions to a computer, it knows nothing. Think of it like giving instructions to an alien that has never seen a sandwich before. That's exactly the same kind of process that we're following here. Now, one of the what Owen has been doing and what we asked you to do, because I didn't listen. Well, it's not so much, Caleb, that I didn't listen. It's actually that um, the instructions, well, sometimes I didn't listen. That's true. But 
Um, it's actually really hard to follow instructions carefully, and it's really, really hard to give instructions so that they are completely clear. Now, the way that we've been doing that so far is to is to describe things in English. Um, but another way to do it is to actually give someone a diagram that explains the steps. And so here we're going to show you a couple of diagrams that might explain how to actually make the Vegemite sandwich. So you'll notice it's got some of the steps in that Owen said. So you place the bread side by side, butter the bread, although that's not a lot of detail to explaining the butter. And then Owen has got an, a um, decision in here that says, how Aussie are you? So if you like a lot of butter um, or margarine or Vegemite, then you can put on a lot. Otherwise, you can put on a small amount and then you put the pieces of bread together. Um, Owen's actually missed out an arrow. So if you go the heaps is your answer to how Aussie are you, you put a regular scraping together, but then there's no arrow actually connecting that to put the bread together. So if you're heaps Aussie uh, is your answer to that question, then unfortunately you have to eat it without putting it together. And, and the next flow chart we've got is a, is a harder version of the same thing. It's got more steps in, and basically it gives a bit more detail about how to actually spread the butter um, over the bread. So you grab the knife, you keep buttering by following this loop. So this is an example of those iterations we were talking about before. You keep buttering until the bread is actually covered with margarine, and then you repeat that process with the Vegemite. And these are examples of another idea that we want to tell you about um, today. So you've got the idea of an algorithm, which is the sequence of steps and decisions needed to solve a problem. The other idea we want to introduce today is called abstraction. Now, again, it sounds like a hard word, but it's not actually that hard. What abstraction means is to hide the details of something to make it easier to understand. So to hide the details of an idea, a problem or solution that are not relevant, so they're not needed, so that you can focus on a manageable number of things. So what Owen was trying to do in giving me the instructions was to only give me as much detail as I needed to do the task. He didn't start by saying, you know, Owen's first step was not invent agriculture, grow wheat, um, then grind the wheat, uh, grind the wheat to make flour. Uh, you know, he didn't start at that point. He assumed that I already had bread. That's hiding a lot of the detail that actually happens before you get to the point of actually making a sandwich. So, um, uh, so whenever you're coming up with an algorithm, you need to work out what level of detail or what level of abstraction you're actually going to use. Um, and thanks, uh, Lowell. Yes, I actually have to buy the bread this morning. Um, I didn't buy it from Coles though, um, bought, bought it from a local shop. Um, and yeah, I had to buy all of the ingredients. I had to find the things in the kitchen, like the knives and all of that stuff as well. Good. So Owen ignored all of those details so that I could get on with the instructions. And there's lots of great activities that uh, you can do uh, in class or, or around this. Um, but now we're going to get to the coding for the, for the rest of the rest of the webinar. Um, um, and we'll just show you an act activity that you can do with your teachers um, after this, and it's going to be using uh, the Wombot like we just showed you previously. Um, so if I go into the correct learning, and then, um, okay. So your teachers will help you do that previous step of um, getting in to, um, to the platform and get you started. Owen is just going to give you, show you the first couple of programming examples and how you actually provide the set of instructions to the computer to follow. Um, and then we'll be finished up for the webinar. Yep. yep. So when you're doing these activities, uh, later, um, you'll see that there's instructions on the left as of what we need to do to program the robot, uh, the Wombot to get the carrot. Um, here, we're going to change the move bo forward block uh, to move forward 50 steps. So I'm going to change that to be 50. 
And then when I click run, it should run an animation that's going to move my little one bot forward one, one grid. And doing that, we can mark that and see if it's correct. Um, I've already got this question correct. So that, that, question, um, that question will be done because we've moved forward one, one step, 50 steps. If I was to not change it and then try and run and mark my program, It'll show me an error that it didn't quite make it all the way to get the carrot yet. So by using this uh, system, it will tell you, um, you can see if your solution is correct down the bottom. So when I click the, this run button up the top, I'll run my program and see what happens. My Wombot moves forward one step. And when I click the mark up the top right and then submit, it will uh, tell me if I'm correct. Yeah. Now, look, those first problems are really pretty straightforward. Um, so not surprisingly, it's really easy to make the Wombot move one block forward. But there's actually quite a few um, uh, patterns that you, uh, you'll you need to make in this activity. There's also some multiple choice questions you'll need to answer to predict which is the right block here. And this particular activity takes you through one step at a time um, for uh, how to do it. So, Anae, to answer your question about how to get onto this, your teachers will provide you um, with that access. And if you're having any difficulty doing that at any point, or you're actually, you know, just signed up to this webinar on your own, um, then you can send an email to help at aca.edu.au and I'll write it in the um, uh, I'll add it into the um, the chat help whoops aca.edu.au um, and we'll help get sorted out to start on this activity but hopefully your teachers will actually give you the link um, to get started with this activity yourself sometime in the next week before we do the next one of these webinars Okay, am I going to do another problem? Or are we going to yeah, continue? Yeah, no, let's, let's do one or two more, Owen. Actually, okay. before you do that, just show them the, the notes between each one. So okay. let's jump straight to one of the problems. But actually, the way it works is that each of these courses explains how different instructions work. And you can run all of the snippets of code and see um, exactly what happens. Um, and uh, so you basically follow the, through the sequence of doing these activities, then doing the questions, and your teacher can see all of the questions you're getting out and can give you a hand if you're stuck. So it's a great way of actually learning about coding, even though you're at home and your teacher is working from somewhere else, their home. So you can all still learn about this together. <laughs> all right, let's do another. Okay. Let's do a, one more harder problem, Owen. Okay, sure. Let's go down to the yeah, let's go down to making a decision just an early making a decision one. all right uh asking questions uh ask questions can i has carrot this one looks good would like another carrot we can um uh, wombot can get one if you say yes put the blocks in order to help the wombot so we're, this question is gonna ask the wombot if he can have a carrot or not so we're gonna ask a question wombot can get one if you say yes can the wombot please have another carrot um can wombot please have a carrot and then if we say yes, change the move forward block to be 250. And we can go and get the carrot if we say yes. So we're asking a decision. Now, Owen's got something wrong there. And you'll notice that the first um, uh, block isn't actually saying the, the right All thing. Right, there we go. There we go. And see, notice now that Owen fixed up his message. Um, mm -hmm. So that it was the please was spelt correctly. It's now going to tick those steps to say you followed it. 
So okay. now it says run the program two times. Once when it asks, type in yes. Yes. <clears throat> and, mm -hmm. and that's good. Now run it again to make sure. What does it do when you say no? It doesn't do anything because the that move instruction is only allowed to happen when the answer to that, the decision, is yes rather than if the um, answer is anything else. In fact, oh, and if you run it one more time, what happens if you say potato or James? Sure. Well, the answer is it doesn't run the code because it doesn't run the move block because the block, the orange block, checks whether the answer to the message is yes. If it's anything else, then it doesn't run that code inside the block. So that's an example of we've got a sequence of steps here. We ask a question, we make a decision, and on the basis of that decision, we determine what code or what other blocks are actually allowed to run. So when we were doing that before with algorithms, it's exactly the same process you're following when you're writing code, except that a computer needs to be told much more clearly what it is that they, um, that they need to, to do, whereas me as a human, admittedly my Vegemite sandwich needed some help, um, but, uh, but otherwise um, humans are better at following instructions. So this is an activity that you can actually go through and complete the whole entire thing at your own pace, and your teachers will have set you up um, access to doing this. We will do so in the next few days. And it will give you an opportunity to do some more learning about coding um, while um, uh, while you're sitting at home. And as I said, your teacher will be able to see where you're up to um, and give you a hand if necessary. If you get stuck, oh, and just click on the tutoring button in the top left-hand corner there. If you click on that and you're stuck and you send a message saying, hey, I don't know what to do here, then... Um, if you wait a little while, a tutor will come back um, or your teacher will come back and help you um, uh, get unstuck because they can actually see the code you've written and work out um, how to help. And just gives you some things to think about, like go and reread the problems and so on. Yeah, you're right, lol, that keyboard. I'm going to have to send Owen a new keyboard for next week. It's a monster. All right. Well, that's as much of the as of a demo of using this online platform as we've got time to do today. If you do get stuck um, or you've got any difficulty getting into um, the activity in the first place, feel free to send us an email to help at aca.edu.au. Um, if you go to the ACA's website, which is just the bit after the at, so aca.edu.au, you'll also find there's a phone number there. Um, and so your parents can give us a ring if you have any difficulty getting into the activity and we'll help you get started. So I think, oh, and that's all of the things we wanted to cover in today's webinar. Yep. Um, I want to say thanks for such great contributions that everyone's making. It's so good to have you all trying the activities, giving us feedback, telling us how you're going. So this is the first of four weeks of these activities. Next week, we're going to be doing something um, that builds on top of today's session. But if you if next week is the first time that you come along, so you might have some friends who also would like to do this session, feel free to tell them about how uh, to register or get their teachers involved. Um, and we'll looking forward to seeing how you go with those online activities and talking to you next week more about coding. Thanks, everyone.